Okay, everybody, so we can start it so we can get finished. We can get going home. And I think yeah. a lot of people are planning on heading out maybe after this. Uh, Anyway, uh, my name is Anthony Sabre. Did anybody come to my first session that I did earlier? Okay, so one, two people, yeah, right. Okay, so I won't go too deep into myself. And this one, I did it intentionally, the first one, because it was topic of immediacy. But uh, yeah, I'm from Boise State University. I'm over from New York. I uh, lived in South Korea 18 years. I'm in Boise now. Love it. Great place to raise a family. Uh, I'm an instructional design consultant primarily. I also teach some courses for ed tech. In fact, they have some of their flyers here, which I just noticed, which is kind of cool. Uh, I got my doctorate there while I was working in South Korea. I did my coursework, and then I moved out here and did my dissertation. Not out of a requirement, but just it just happened to work out that way. Anyway, I did my dissertation on the construct of immediacy, which I talked about earlier. Uh, Flipgrid is something that I'm really interested in because it offers a new space and a way for faculty to deliver a sense of presence and also to be immediate with their students. So. I want to give you some, ha how many people here have used Flipgrid? Okay, so preaching with choir here. Uh, I will demonstrate the tool for a few minutes for those that want to give it a try, that if you have an experience with it. Uh, but that's not the main purpose of this one. You can spend plenty of time exploring it. It's really easy to use. Uh, so I'll spend a little bit of time on that, and then I'll go through some of the benefits and, and some of the kind of theoretical ideas that I have about it. And then also, finally, I will present some data, preliminary data on a study that we've done with uh, we collected data from students in a high enrollment course about 90 students uh, in the summer session. We had some sessions. So I'll just kind of show you some of the themes that we came out of, which are really great for a lot of ideas for some types of research projects you might do from that. So let me just start it. Uh, first of all, how many of you have used, book, have used Flipgrid in class? Okay, so a few of you sound like know about it, but I haven't quite used it yet. Awesome. Uh, that's all I really wanted to ask you. I put the code there for downloading it, so you can either A, go to your device and download the app really quickly and then just put in this code, or you can just go to a browser and open it up and uh, type out the whole thing. I encourage you to try it. It only takes like a minute to get it down on your computer and get logged in. And so I'll show you the features of this tool that way. So, yeah, bring it up on here. So I'll kind of walk you through it if you want. You can even uh, register for an educator account right now if you'd like. So one of the great things about it, uh, are any of you Boise, uh, are any of you a Google University or a college that uses Google uh, login and so on? So Boise State does, so we can um, easily log in, educator login. Hope that I don't have the same failure problem that I've seen some other presentations have where the internet's not working. All right. So I can e since we're at Google uh, University, we can easily log in with Google, which is really nice. Although, since this is not my computer, I'll probably have to type in my password two or three times here. But So for most of my students, or for me in my office, or at home on my device, it only takes a couple of clicks to log in because most students have their password and everything remembered on the computer. What you see here is uh, I've been invited to a bunch of other ones that I haven't accepted yet um, as an educator, as a co-pilot, but I've created, the, so these, if you think of it as like a discussion board, like if you use maybe Blackboard or Canvas, you have your discussion board, right? And then on the board you might have various forums, right? So you can imagine um, here, you might log in, and then on that for on that board, you would have topics, and a topic is like a forum, right? So you might have like, we'll say, this could potentially be like your week one discussion forum, and this would be your week two discussion forum, and your week three, and, and so on. So students would see them uh, in their course. Let me go to the student view first. Uh, this is what the students would see. So you notice I had two topics in there. And you'll see that has two topics listed here. 
Uh, the first one, or the most recent one, is uh, loaded by default. And so the way you would create a video uh, as a student, so normally in my courses, I would have my, a video of myself here, introducing the topic, and the prompts for the discussion here. And then students, pretty much on any device that I've seen, it works really nicely. You would click on the giant green and white plus sign. Uh, it's asking me to log in since it thinks I'm a student. So now that I'm already logged in, it's quite quick and easy. Oh, doesn't have a camera, so <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, I can do it on my device here. and hold it up and show you. So I would click that, log into Google, continue whatever it says there. This is my Boise State Google account. Uh, log in. It's so easy to use. <laughs> It really is, though. So I, te I use this in my own personal class. Uh, it's, a, it's an introductory to online learning course. It's a lot of non-traditional students, very technologically challenging. Uh, not a single one in the last three semesters that I've used this have had reported that they've had been having difficulty doing it. Which that, those are people that have like, trouble like, navigating in Blackboard or like, submitting an assignment and stuff. So they've done quite well with this one, which has been pleasantly surprising. So I'll hold it up here to show you. Okay, so as you can see, it's brought up the video screen. And you can follow along on your own device if you want. You can start recording right here. And I've set it at a 30 second uh, limit. So with the Flipgrid, you can set it anywhere from 15 seconds to five minutes as the maximum. It's kind of like Twitter in that regard. You're limited on how much you can talk. Which is really nice as a professor because you don't want to have to listen to someone drone on for like 30 minutes. Right? I've had students do that. I have not in VoiceThread, for example. Uh, so once you click that, you have the option. It starts rotating here to show you that your time is passing. It also counts down up here. Uh, there's also a nice feature here for students that are uh, sensitive to showing their own face. You can actually click on the filters here and have it become pixelated to kind of consider your face. So it really depends on the learning objectives of that course, whether or not you require that. You can also you know, add emojis and stuff while you're doing it. Um, and then once you're done, you can either press pause or just go hit the next button. You have a chance to do some editing there. Uh, once you're done with editing, you click it again. Uh, now you take a selfie. Okay, horrible picture. Um, students get really creative, a lot of these and a lot of these and so on. Uh, you have your last chance to add a title to it, and then once you do that, you can submit your video, and you'll see it will show up on the app in a few seconds. So I'll switch over to that view. The Wi-Fi here is extremely slow. Maybe I should tell her to my phone. Okay, as we're waiting for that to show up, I'll go back into the educator view to show you a little bit of some of the settings you can set up. It's not normally slow like this at all. What's up? I'm I can add something. Sure. Did you already add your video? There you go. Ralph is already showing up. So we'll wait for a few more people to show up. Yeah, mine's just taking so I don't know if maybe it's just my device or something. Uh, so in the educator view, you can, for example, click on here to go to that student view. You can add co-pilots. So like what I do as instructional designers, I'll design these for faculty when we're developing their course. And then I'll share it with them so they have their first version of it so they don't have to bother setting it up. You can also set some things on the board in the editing function. So for example, you can, uh, so what I do at Boise State is I'll set it for student uh, school email. So they have to log in from the Boise State uh, domain in order to view it. So somebody outside the domain cannot find it. Uh, students that don't have the link either cannot identify it. So it's private to that class. Worst case scenario, I can kind of go out to the university if someone shares the link with a friend or something. Um, you can also add captioning. So I always turn that on. I always uh, suggest to my faculty to do that. Allow downloads. You can change your banner, which is actually really helpful for me as a faculty. I like to change it each semester so I can kind of more quickly identify which one of those in that long list that I have is my most current semester. It's quite helpful there. Uh, and it just adds some character to your course. So I'm just going to hit cancel. because You can also update uh, each of these. So as you, can, as you saw, Ralph's video showed right up, and everybody can see it. Uh, in the student view. 
Anybody else getting close to loading? I'm, I just recorded. How do I, how do I upload? How do I just narrow the lower right? Is it green arrow? Oh, you have to follow the green arrows. Oh, there's my horrible double chin picture. Yeah, you take it. <laughs> yeah, you didn't want that one, right? Yeah. He's like, oh! <laughs> that was a great picture. <laughs> one of the really, so as you can see, the, pic, the people's videos are showing up right away. But as you know, with a discussion forum, often you can set it so that students uh, won't see other students' posts until after they've, re they've submitted theirs, right? So often you don't want to use that so that students can't be informed by other students' responses. On their own. So there's a lot of use cases where you'd want to do that. So you can do something similar in Flipgrid. Uh, what you can do is set it to be, you can turn on what they call the um, moderation feature. So this means that after students submit it, it requires me to moder to accept it before it can be viewed. Now how do you use that? Well, uh, in a class of you know even 100 students, the faculty in the course I'm going to talk about in a little while use that so that all students would Submit it. They could see it in their own, but it wasn't public to everybody else. And then on like Wednesday night, when it was like everyone was due, she would go in there on Thursday morning and just open everyone's up so that everybody can see them. That was the way she did it, which worked out great. It worked out basically for the same effect of being able to um, hide that until everyone submits it. So as you can see, we have a few here. We can click on Greg's nice picture. We can record. We can respond to Greg. And here, normally, we, so if someone respond to Greg, please, on their device. And what, he, what happens when you reply, you'll see a little circle up here, which is which is which with each person's reply post. And so you can see it's in a sense it's like a threaded discussion. You can't nest a reply into a reply. So if Greg replies to me, he'll show up here. I cannot reply to Greg's reply yet. That's one of the limitations that students even mentioned uh, in the study that we did. So some limitations, but overall, if you have decent Wi-Fi connection, unlike mm -hmm. here. It, those pictures load quite instantly and come up, those videos load quite instantly and come up pretty quickly. So you can easily just work through all the different settings and give it a try. But I, I want to encourage you to give it a try because it's quite easy to use. So let me talk about it more now um, from a kind of theoretical perspective. So jump ahead. So first of all, Flipgrid was uh, developed in, at the University of Minnesota in 2015. It was bought out by Microsoft in 2018. Microsoft has basically said that they're going to keep it a free tool uh, for education uh, for, the, for the future. So they're not hinting at any time that they're going to plan on monetizing, at least at the, um, the... I can imagine maybe at the institutional level they'll offer a license where you can integrate it into Blackboard or Canvas or something like that and into your, you know, your systems and so on, P perhaps. But at this point, it's a free tool. Um, so one of the things I like about it is when I think about it, you know, traditionally we've had synchronous video uh, or synchronous live meetings, right? Education is traditionally face to face. Uh, but we've been thinking about the alternative of face to face being asynchronous online uh, text based education. Well, these days there's, there's been become like the opening up of these semi synchronous kind of spaces, right? Where we can, we can theoretically use texting or we can work on a Google document together in a kind of semi synchronous space. Uh, and so this opens up, so we had that with like Google Docs, right? Students can get together, work on a document and text together. But now this opens up the opportunity to use asynchronous video more effectively and easily. There's been tools like VoiceThread in the past. Have any of you used VoiceThread, right? So some head shaking. So VoiceThread was kind of a similar concept, this idea that you can have some kind of a resource, like a PDF or a picture or a video or a PowerPoint that students could then have discussions around. Uh, Flipgrid is that same idea, but it's not so much around some specific artifact, but more really for a kind of discussion, right? And so, um, so the questions that I start asking myself is, what is a discussion? Really? We call them discussion forums, but if you look at the definition of discussion, it always includes the word talk or speak or dialogue. You know, did people ever have text-based discussions in history? No, they sat around a fire and talked, or they sat around a sofa together and talked, sat across each other in armchairs. Uh, so discussion is really something that we do face to face. So with online learning, text-based online learning, we, we tried to approximate that in the past because we didn't have synchronous video and so on. 
by, by creating these text-based discussion forms, right? Because discussion and social construction of knowledge and everything is very important in learning. So we created this, but it's not really achieving, in my opinion, the right purpose. Because what, what are some of the benefits of oral communication? Well, oral communication has benefits like it's really great for brainstorming. It's really great for creative dialogue. It's really great for engaging people and, and kind of inciting people's passions and such, right? It's also really good for like ridiculing people and so on. What about text-based communication? What is that usually really good for? Well, I think of it as being good for things like really deep analysis, right? Deep synthesis of language. So if you want your students, why do students write essays? Why do we want people to write essays and record their research in, in dialogue, in written, not dialogue, in written text? Because it just creates, it's a much deeper level of analysis, right? So when I think of asynchronous discussion forums, what would be the better use case for that? For, hey, what's your opinion on this? And what's your opinion on that? And what are your feelings on this? And what are your feelings on that? Or would it be better to use discussion, text-based discussion forums for getting students to really post like, deep analytical thinking on some topic and posting deep analytical thoughts and responses to that. Right? But when you want students to do this higher level creative brainstorming stuff, something like Flipgrid or a live discussion forum, would probably be much more effective. So really thinking about how and what your purpose is for the communication, because now we have these different tools opened up to us, is really important. So you know, the idea is, how can we leverage this new modality now? And so I, I called this you know, getting beyond course introductions, because all my faculty are like, well, I can use it for the self-introductions at the beginning of the course. Great, really good for creating that sense of community and presence and, and so on. Uh, but what can you do beyond that? Is the question I have. So, well, one of the things that you know theoretically it's really good for that uh, relief from discussion board fatigue, right? You know, I mean, the picture of this guy here I thought was like perfect. Right? It was like it was that, and like a cat that had like a slogan under it said like I hate discussion boards. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I thought he was more like that's probably a lot. A lot of our students look at these discussion boards. Um, so that fatigue, uh, you know, you can really get away from that and have a new way of doing. It. It's also really good for that idea of developing community and social presence. And I talked about the topic of social presence earlier, so, uh, but the idea of community building, right? It's a great way for students to introduce themselves. In fact, it is really good for that. A uh, great way to have reflective activities where you're talking, talking, reflecting with other people verbally before going into a much deeper written re reflection, right? So it's a great idea for using it for that. Uh, but really, it's what I think is really good for that high level of social presence where you want you know, I defined social presence earlier as the tasks that require a high level of socio-emotional communication. We need to see someone's facial expressions. We need to see someone that, you need to hear the timbre of their voice and get that nuance that visual communication provides and oral uh, communication provides. So if you want to have discussions about identity, one of my faculty recently, she was teaching a course where she talks about, you know, uh, um, what was it, white privilege, right? Things like that. And so white, white guilt and so on. And so topics like that. So text-based, the students weren't really understanding. They were like, how do you know everyone in this class is white or something like that? And so you can really start to get to the higher level that you need with the visual the, you know, and the oral. Ideas like brainstorm. If you want students to get together and brainstorm a topic, but it's hard to do it synchronously. So this is a great second place that we can do that. So, uh, so one course that I found was really interesting that we worked on was our genetic counseling. In fact, my colleague over there, Christy, she sits right next to me in a different cube. Uh, we share a cube in a sense. And we were talking about genetic counseling and they wanted, the students have to do a live counseling uh, simulation, right? They, they practice it. So it might be like practice telling someone that their fetus that they're pregnant with has Down syndrome or something, right? So you really need to be able to practice your presentation of yourself in that situation and be able to respond to someone else's you know, body language and so on and that sensitivity of you know, that very high level of connection. So would you want to do genetic counseling via email? I don't think so. Definitely not text messaging or a letter. So you're going to have to do that very face-to-face -face kind of communication. So the, what we thought was a good idea would be to have them practice presenting themselves in fact like looking in the mirror. Right, so present how you would ex how you would you know, break the news that someone's fetus that they're pregnant with has a, a disease, right, a genetic defect, and so 
the students would post that video themselves and they get feedback mostly prior to then going to the live session where they're then taking it to the next level. So they can maybe write out their script first to kind of deep think it and practice it and prepare it and then practice presenting it like an elevator pitch for example. We did that in another course. And then after that they can then go to that final set stage. So it's this idea of stepping it up and finding a place for Flipgrid to help you meet those objectives, not just for the nice feeling, good, good feelings and so on. So I want to present a larger case study now. So uh, I worked with a faculty to develop a course called Law for Managers for a Business Management Online Review Program uh, for undergraduates. And the original course that we designed a year and a half or two years ago was really dry. It was really boring. It was a totally text-based course. What you would totally imagine a law course would be, right? Sorry to offend anyone who might be lost in the background here. So they had to do Iraq analysis. And remember, they're not law students, they're business students. So they'd do Iraq analyses, or they'd go to the deep written analyses of these uh, cases and so on. So at the end of the course, she was like, I want to make it totally different. I want to just engage students and so on. So what we did through many discussions was we came up with this whole entire framework for it, where they were going to uh, use Flipgrid to hold weekly manager meetings. Because the idea was she wanted them, she said, you know, in the real world, they're going to need this as managers because when, when these case, when these law, legal issues come up as a manager, they're going to normally you'd meet up on a you know, Monday morning at a meeting and talk about it and hash out the different legal issues and concerns about that. Uh, and then at the end of the course, so they would do that, and then at the end you'd present like your solutions to the CEO, like this is what we think you should do. So we end up saying, okay, so they're going to have five law topics in the course, and we're going to simulate a legal problem each week based on a simulated company. So they watch a video about a company, uh, not a real company, that deals in prosthetics. And so like, the first week's topic was about employment law. They learned all about employment law through the readings. You know, they had to read the scenario, read the chapters, related to that. And then they had to say, you know, should they hire this person who left another company early with a clause that they couldn't go work in the same industry? for six months, right? Should they hire them or should they not hire them? Uh, and so they had to then post the flip grid, each person in the meeting, of their groups of 10, they had to post what they thought. Yeah, I think that they should based on this law and, and kind of provide some verbal evidence for it. And then later on in the week, they'd have to return and see what their other peers in their group presented as responses, yeah. So in that exciting moment, you're not to do it, so I don't think you're not going to talk about this, but is there a maximum number of posts, like when you are working in groups of 10 and you're getting feedback for from potentially nine other students? I don't see any limits on the number of responses. Um, the students are required to do like two responses, right? Or at least right. like, they maybe three or something. And so, this is, so you saw like here they had like two responses. This yeah. person had one response, two responses. Um, so, you so not seen anything where it stopped? Not yet. I haven't seen any limitations on it. I don't think there is. Have you okay. seen any limitations on it? At least 27. Yeah, okay. So you've done 27. Like responses to each other, right? Uh, or just or the original. Whatever the posting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't think there's any limitations for that I've seen. Okay. But this course, of course, 90 students, they don't want to have 90 students posting each other. Sure. It's a group of 10, right? Which is much more manageable. Um, so this, this course. So the idea was at the end of, after they submitted their verbal ideas, brainstorming ideas together, hearing each other's ideas, uh, they were then able to um, go and draft out a memo to the CEO and submit it at the end of that week's month, that month was week. So they submit it, and this, this course had coaches. So you had the instructor and then two academic coaches who would provide feedback, formative feedback to the students on their memo that they drafted. At the end of the semester, after seven weeks, they would then draft out their final response based on the feedback they got from their peers and the feedback they got from their coach and they would submit that to the course instructor who was playing the role of the CEO. And so we asked some research questions about, you know, we included these on the uh, evaluation and, you know, I liked using Flipgrid. So there were pretty good results, especially considering the business management, which we'll see here. Uh, the department mean is typically 4.2, 4.1, 4.2. So the lower number is the department mean. So this course came out on top on everything relative to the department. What I found most interesting was that the biggest gap was in the oral communication, which normally is one of the lowest scores for the department. And here, it's now one of the highest scores. So I think that the Flipgrid really brought that oral communication, which is one of their you know, foundation requirements. 
for the calm, right? To have this oral ability to communicate. So I think this course was really great in helping to achieve that goal. So we asked other questions like, is there anything that you would like to share about the summer course experience? And so in this part, there was 46 responses out of you know 90s or so students. Uh, and they mentioned specific things like they enjoyed using Flipgrid to do our posts. Um, I enjoyed it so the work didn't feel like work, right? It was a little bit writing, it was a little talk, right? Uh, this course was fun, having to solve legal problems for Brimwood, that was the simulated company. And the Flipgrid discussions were fun. And I usually don't enjoy discussion forums. And this is something I saw a lot in the comments. So this is kind of what I was really hoping to see, right? This kind of thing. But it's not just about enjoyment, it's also about the purpose of it, right? Because yeah, learning styles are one thing, but again, written, written communication is good for deep analysis. So you're writing that deep suggestion to the CEO, you want to get much more logical and careful and cautious and the exact terminology you would use. So Flipgrid was amazing, right? There were only two negative responses on this very open question, but they were related more to like, you know, um, the amount of work each week or the seven week structure of the course and things like that. So um, I feel it took a lot in a different direction, a lot of these coursework. So that was a kind of more general and great course, best so far. So these students really enjoyed it and we heard that a lot also. So two questions, I kind of combined them all because they were similar questions and they came out with the same response, similar kind of responses. So there was about 108 responses and this was just some of the things I found was that one thing was that there was this kind of appreciation for the novelty of it, but just that it wasn't a discussion board. Mm -hmm. So maybe this can wear off a little bit, but I think uh, with time that it will stand up a bit. So you know, it's students like saying it's a great alternative to normal discussions, made it easier to work with other classmates. This idea that they were hesitant at first, but they got kind of used to it. It was common to see. Uh, it was much better than having to write a bunch of BS. I thought that was awesome. Because I often think that that's what the students are writing. Um, and so a new interactive way compared. So there's a lot of comparisons that they were making. And I didn't ask them that, right? That was the comparisons that they were making. So they were automatically understanding this was, a, this was something alternative to written Did they have requirement? To respond at least once, or was it just quite open? Yeah, they had to go. They had to respond. I think it was twice. Okay, they had to respond. Uh, convenience also. Students talked a lot about like it was well not a lot, but they mentioned a few times that uh, it was easier to schedule this way. This is the asynchronous idea of video rather than synchronous. So students talked about that. They loved that they were they didn't have to worry about scheduling and that it was flexibility. So that was something that came up. Uh, this idea of community and social presence really came up a lot. So like, you know, the idea of great seeing and learning with my classmates, uh, you know, it makes me feel more connected with my classmates, or uh, again, this idea of scheduling was nice. Um, yeah, so they like the idea that you can meet this way. Uh, also the idea that a lot of students were saying that they helped, they thought this helped them contribute to their learning. It wasn't just nice, and it wasn't just that affective side of it, but it was actually helping them to learn cognitively. So. Uh, great for my growth, or it helped me to be concise, clear, and conversationally personal. Conversational personally. Uh, help me, this idea of getting outside their comfort zone came up a lot. So here, I like this one. It was, um, I feel like so many discussion boards and courses end up, I agreed with, restate the question, because, generic answer, filler, filler, filler. Right? I think that they all realize, yeah, a lot of them use this formula, right? Uh, I feel like Flipgrid help, form help keep people focused on the discussion. And again, that was like the whole idea of this short, in this course, it required two minutes. Um, and I think we said they had to respond at least 90 seconds. So we didn't hold them to the full two minutes for the response. Uh, people aren't always great at writing or texting. So this idea of like, you know, alternative learning style and uh, communication style came up. Uh, there were some general critiques of it. So for example, but this was very few of them. Uh, this person was saying basically that they wished that there was um, some live video conversation. Only one person mentioned that. Mm -hmm. um, not a huge fan of uh, recording through Flipgrid. I would have preferred discussion board. Only one person said that he would prefer the written mm -hmm. discussion, which I thought was really interesting. Um, yeah, this one, I, I wish I got more feedback. I didn't always get full credit. It wasn't until why. I wasn't sure where I went wrong. This is probably something about faculty feedback and scoring on it. Uh, and then finally, this one. And this is, this is right. Like Some people are like able to do it on the bus or like at work or something like that, when they can't do that there, so. So there were some points about functionality, there were some positive points about functionality and some negative. So mostly there was just a lot of people saying, and I only put a few here, because 
which is sort of past, re repetitious that the idea was easy to use, easy to use, easy to use. Um, there are some functions that I put out more just because they're very specific. Um, some people have just said that there was glitching that occurred or some sound background noise was an issue sometimes. Sometimes trouble uploading or uh, this is what I was mentioning earlier. You can't reply to someone else's reply. That idea of nesting discussion responses back and forth. It's kind of hard. You can't do that there. Um, well, this guy was like, he's a Photoshop expert, so he didn't like that you were limited in how much you can edit that video. But you can actually record your response on your webcam, bring it into Photoshop, edit it, and then upload it that way. You don't have to do directly to the webcam or to your phone. So, uh, And then uh, I would have liked to be able to type out replies. So that's something that VoiceThread does. Yeah. I can imagine Flipgrid might do that in the future, because I thought that immediately, too. Yeah. Like, if you're on the bus, you might be able to listen to it, but you want to just be able to yeah. type a response. I think that will be a nice feature to add in the future. They did just recently add those filters, like the one you can look at, learn look. They added a whiteboard feature to it recently as well. So they are adding some things. There were some uh, mixed results about the time constraints, like that two minutes that we provided. Uh, but most of the students felt that it was about the right amount of time. But some students felt rushed. Some didn't feel rushed. You know, So it was really mixed what students felt about the appropriateness of the time. Uh, feeling awkward was a theme that came out a lot. Right? Was feeling awkward but overcoming it. Uh, so a lot of students said, you know, it can feel awkward to record results via video, but it was a good practice. Um, at first it was, but I overcame it, or I like putting faces to words and listening to all the opinions, I'm just shy. So I was a little nerve wracking, but after a few weeks it didn't bother me. So this was something that came out over and over and over again. So a lot of students were overcoming that. Um, so we asked the question, because we were concerned about making students show their faces, right? So in some courses it makes sense, right? It's like a public speaking course, Sorry, but you, learn, you need to learn to show your face in public speaking. Even if you have a big marker on your face or something, right? Public speaking is a part of life, and you have to learn to do that. Um, so we had uh, 68 responses. So did you show uh, your face? And of those 68, 54 said yes. Seven said no. And some said sometimes I did, sometimes I did. So we looked into that. I looked into it more. And so there were some themes, right? So the, of those that said yes, some of them felt that like improved communication. This is the idea of, like nonverbal cues were helping them, or hearing it helped them. So, you know, yes, I did because my expressions helped my explanation, or personally, I liked it because the visuals helped. I did not reply to classmates who didn't use video, which I thought was interesting. That could be a study right there, right? You can see. Um, easier to relay information for this person, especially verbal people, right? Uh, relationship building. Uh, it helps foster a connection between people. Uh, this one also said, right, this is a different person, but they said, I found it hard to formulate replies to the post that had no face mm -hmm. associated with them, or, you know, it was a more personal level. I like to use social media. I think it's kind of related to that idea. Um, it's more personal and interactive, and it creates a better team environment, right? So this is like, if you want to have students do a team project together, and I think something like Flipgrid is a great way to start them off. They okay, you know each other, norming, their, their group uh, norms, and so on. Uh, also, this idea of communicating confidence or avoiding being perceived as being shy. So there was this kind of, some people felt this kind of idea of social pressure. Like, I used to be a journalist, you know, so I'm used to it. I'm not shy. I'm not shy. Right? There was some kind of theme with that, right? Um, I didn't want to come off as timid, right? I didn't want to look like I'm silly, right? Not showing your face would seem silly to some people. I believe that's important to move out of your comfort zone, so. Um, and then I did show my face in each video. So recording myself did not make me nervous. So this idea of, you know, I want to be, I want to show that I'm sh not, not shy or that I'm confident and so on. Um, and some people did it with reservations, right? Like, yeah, I did it, but you know, I figured most of the team would never see again, so that's why I didn't bother no, too much. Uh, <laughs> you know, or I, it felt awkward and it helped to develop a more personal connection. So even though it was awkward, they did it. It did help. So they would probably prefer not to, but they did. So that was another kind of thing. And then also, of those that didn't use video at all, um, it was interesting because not too many people were saying it's like, I'm just not comfortable showing anything. Most of them weren't really saying like, hey, I'm a shy person, I'm just not doing it. Like, most of them, and the interesting thing is, those that had that kind of mixed response and did it, they were like, most of them were like, yeah, I didn't want to do it, I felt awkward, but after a while I got used to it. So it really wasn't like that many people that are so introverted or so uh, averse to showing themselves in video. Most of them that didn't do it were talking about things like, I just came home from work, it was 1 a.m., or 
uh, you know, I just came back from the gym and I didn't feel presentable. So this idea of not being presentable, or uh, one of them mentioned it was it was dark when they get home, right? So, you know, late at night or early in the morning, maybe they don't want to wake up family members or something like that by turning on the light or something. So that was a kind of common thing there too. Uh, and then the mix also was like depending on the situation. So again, they did it if they maybe on a day that they didn't come home from work late. They, they did it. They showed their video. Days when they came home late, they didn't use the video. Uh, and again, that idea of like, they felt the need to try and show it sometimes, but not always. And then some of them did it like overcoming reluctance. So Anyway, these are the main themes I found. Uh, any questions? Yeah. You uh, used voice thread as well. Do you yeah. have a reason for using one for one situation and the other for something else? Yeah, so like I said, I think that this is really good for just, you want to have conversations. You want to talk. You're not focusing on some kind of an artifact that you're looking at, talking around it. Because in, in voice that like that artifact is the kind of center of it all. It's, it's more like a PowerPoint presentation. We're all looking at that and talking about that versus we're all sitting around a table talking. So I think there's some kind of, kind of space difference there. Also, VoiceThread has some limitations as far as licensing and so on. So I think that, that's a limitation as well. And with uh, Flipgrid, there's no just audio. It's, it's, just, it's video only. The only audio, like, so, because of FERPA, I don't want to show you any of the actual co courses, but in this course, we did say that students weren't required to show their face. We encouraged them to. Uh, we said that you can show your dog. or So some people, like, show their potted plant instead of themselves. Some people just put their thumb or put it on a table or something. Uh, some people put, like, their little uh, stuffed animal or their dog. So, you know, people did those kind of things. But as you saw, there weren't that many people that didn't show their face. So yeah, they weren't, and now that was, they didn't have that blurry feature at the time. So I think a lot, I would just say do that instead of not coming to you. Yeah, over here, then I'll come over to you. Um, so it's a pretty small sample, but are you starting to see any indication that traditionally attractive people get more responses? I wondered about that. versus males or ethnic groups. Um, or just the curious patient, yeah. or the person that didn't show themselves maybe gets more because well, yeah, it's yeah, novel so that's and that's different. Part of it. So, yeah, I'm just You know, that's interesting because we offered up a, uh, there was some critique that it could, it, it, from a social justice perspective, that it could, uh, you know, uh, allow for micro-discrimination or something like that. But then I said, well, then we should just cancel classroom courses, too, because that also, in the real world, if you're, whether or not you're a minority that has to face micro-discriminations or if you're in the majority that doesn't have to face them, you still have to deal, learn to deal with people that are minorities and learn to work with people from a different culture in mm -hmm. any regard in real life, right? And so that really doesn't, that argument doesn't really seem to hold much water once you really look at it because that's life. I mean, you have to... But like you think to acknowledge that in the classroom and absolutely. especially in law class or some other class where it can be interesting to discuss. Absolutely. I, I agree. It's a really interesting question. That's why I think that that idea of like you're required to show your face versus not required to show your face really should depend on the learning outcome. Right? So like I said, it's a public speaking course or a genetic counseling course. If you're going to be counseling people face to face, you should learn to present yourself that way. So I think that, yeah, really interesting question. I, I found myself also like, why am I going to this student first or this student first? Is it just because they're the most recent person to post? They show up on the top left, right? Or is it because they're attractive or they're smiling or they're somehow interesting and different? So, Really interesting, yeah, totally interesting. There's some data collected out here that you can find. You know, you can download an Excel sheet and see who responded to who and who liked who and how long their their posts were and stuff. So you can do a lot of interesting uh, analysis just based on that. Yeah, great question. I appreciate that. I was just gonna say, um, even though it says it will take stills like JPEGs, it really is terrible at it. But my wife, my students wound up taking five second videos with their phone up to pick up a photo they needed. To Putting it that way, it doesn't take uh, JPEGs and GIFs, like it's, even though it says it will. Oh, okay. so unless they fixed it. So if you want to upload an image instead of exactly. yourself or something, yeah. So you start to throw that up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Over here, and then we'll go back. Thanks. And then a comment. So I'm working on my master's degree at CSU, and we spoke for a ton. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we found norms for us is that we are basically expected to look for someone who doesn't have a Right. So that's just part of our community. That's what we know to do. Right. It's, it's just natural to us now. Right. 
Yeah, I put that in a lot of the instructions and courses for faculty where, you know, prioritize those who haven't gotten your, right. your yeah, I'm sure you've done that or seen that yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, in discussion, yeah, that makes totally. sense, right, yeah, so you can spread the connection amongst all students. Yeah, and I wasn't trying to dismiss your idea before, because that was something I was dealing with recently at work, where someone saying, you can't use Flipgrid because, it, I, I was just like, yeah, but in real life, people of all different sorts have to come to a classroom together, like, we, should we get rid of the classroom, and that was, Something that I was like, yeah, so it wasn't in response to your point, it was a really interesting discussion. I'm going to go back to your question with you. So, two part question here. Do you know, um, is Flipgrid integrated with um, Canvas or any other LMSs? And I think that's how Microsoft's going to monetize it. Yeah, that's what I was, was, was going to ask you. Like, how to think the if they question. choose to. Yeah, but then um, to the you know, um, data about um, assessment, some people not being satisfied with the, the grades they got on. How do you assess their, their posts? Do yeah. You know, rubrics or um, that, to me, would seem to be one of the things. Great question, yeah. yeah. So you can't do it direct. Well, Flipgrid does have its own like rubric that you can, and scoring system in there, but it doesn't integrate with Blackboard or Canvas or anything. Um, so I don't use that. The fact that I've worked with how to use that. Basically, tool stream monitors, bring up Flipgrid on one, yeah. the gradebook on the other. Open up the rubric that you set up for it based on your posting. It's very, any, any um, I guess, discussion board rubric would be applicable right. here. You might add something about the quality of the video and audio, I guess, yeah. or something like that. But, yeah, great question. Is that a question? Um, I was just going to add to what you said um, about faculty members saying something to you about mm -hmm. you know, having a video. Uh, I had somebody say the exact same thing to me, and I said, well, if you want to provide those, And I think I, I agree with that to a point. In other words, like, I agree with that. Like, if it's like, if you're talking about sensitive issues or you're brainstorming something, but if you're like just like, you know, relaying information, I think that wouldn't be important, right? Like, just text might be good enough for that. So, you know, if you're just relaying like a transcript of what you did last weekend, and all you need is that data without the digital piece or anything, then that'd be fine. But if, if your outcomes are affected, if it's high level, like, if it's a team negotiating, how they're going to present? How they're going to present some project? Or I think that visual will be much much more effective for them there. Yeah, I kind of only use it for like that, right? Because yeah. I want it to be in a real discussion when I need to post it. Right. Because right. it's something else, but it's giving us some detail. Yeah, intuitively, right? <laughs> you go to that. Yeah. yeah. And that's also if you wanted to use Flipgrid for like um, reflections, but you only want you as the instructor to see it, you can just turn that moderator mode on. Mm -hmm. And so now. Because it doesn't like go off automatically. You have to manually do it. So you can say, I want you to post your, um, you know, your spoken reflections this week to Flipgrid, and only I'm going to see it. And then you can go in there and, and, and view their video and respond to them as well. And only, you, only they can see your response as well. That's a kind of nice way that you can use it and offer an alternative way. You know, you know, the downside, I've heard faculty say, and I agree, like one downside is sometimes you just want to scan through it too. So it does allow you to listen at like one and a half or double speed, like you can on YouTube. So that's what I've done. I like put it on like put on the chipmunk voice and then listen to it. I do it a little faster, but yeah. Any other comments? Yeah. One more question. Sure. So I I, I work at Greenwood College outside of Seattle, and a fairly sized um, portion of our student population definitely um, deals with the realities of the digital divide. Um, they don't have the same kind of access as some other students do. I'm just wondering if any equity issues ever come up with these issues. Yeah, that's so a really good question. It's a great question. I have that question too. One thing that's a little bit consoling is that often with the digital divide, those that don't have like a computer at home, often mm -hmm. the only device they do have is like a smartphone. And so because it's so cross-platform, but you know, a lot of our online programs require you to have an internet connection and that's part of the foundational requirement for even enrolling in the program. Yeah, those issues still come up. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah. So there's a um, web site on Flipgrid about accessibility, and um, it does have full captioning and all those things go into it. So um, I've had faculty ask me that question mm -hmm. before, right? Yeah. Am I going to be able to 
They did capture this kind of new, right? In the last few months, they added that. Yeah, they added it. So um, there's a there's a page that's just about these. I don't think they have a V pack to set up yet, though. I think they looked at it and couldn't find it. I mean, I don't but they know. may have been out there. You know, the fox right is. So, you think you're going to use it? You're going to recommend it? Who here is faculty? So, have you, and faculty who have used it already. Okay, so two of you. Do you think you'll use it going forward? I teach tech. Um, mm -hmm. uh, web development, or we don't have a lot of current activities where discussions are critical to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I do have an introduction, you know, first we need attendance activity mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this might be a thing for that. I'm still thinking of how I might apply it at other times during the time. Yeah, so tech, um, and what, what kind of tech? Web development, you know, spread the web page. Okay. Yeah, that might be a great, you know, do you ever have an idea where there's a discussion where they post some code they wrote or something and they review each other's code and like talk about what they like or didn't like, that kind of thing? Um, no, I do have them go check out some other web pages, their own pages, mm -hmm. things like that. And, uh, yeah, actually, so you can use that voice thread kind of approach. Where you can now add a link to your post. So if students, if you want to say, find a really cool website that's got some great design, share the link and tell us what you like about it. And then other students maybe have to go and look at that same page and talk about what they like about yeah, it. Yeah, we, we use Slack. Um, yeah, okay. That, so, uh, so you can do that verbally, I guess. Yeah, in this so case, we do that because screen captures and hyperlinks are super easy to get across. Yeah, cool. Yeah, awesome. It's interesting tool. Yeah, it's nice to have it in the toolbox, right? Of different things you can do. And yeah, don't try to force it into it, but think about, all right, if you want to have the advantages of asynchronous text, when would you use that? The advantages of synchronous video when you do that, use that and when would you use this tool and so it's got some of the benefits of asynchronous because you don't have to do it live and scheduling issues and stuff but it's got some of the benefits of uh, text based as well because you have time to reflect on what the other person said you have time to kind of find evidence to support your responses if you want to do that uh, and then you have a chance to then construct your response before you actually respond so it's not quite the same as live synchronous but you do have all that visual and oral kind of that you're providing. Even things like people have talked about, like, oh, I like that picture on your wall, I like that band too. Or like that. Mm -hmm. This is really nice. Yeah. All right, well, um, what, what's your role that you play at your institution? Oh, well, I'm the... Uh, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that. I say I was Jacqueline of all trades and mistress of none. Oh, no. oh okay. We'll just leave it a little mysterious. All right, you. okay. <laughs> She's a spy, obviously. <laughs> How about you? What's your role? I'm an instructional designer. Oh, okay. So is this a tool that you think you would recommend? Well, we have access to um, VoiceThread. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to kind of see how the two compare. Yeah. And because we involve, you know, we have the license, mm -hmm. I probably would continue to use that. It's got a few advantages um, if you want it to be a graded activity. Mm -hmm. It does link directly. It doesn't figure it's like... Oh, right. and things. But, you know, it's good to know about a free and easily accessible alternative. Yeah, absolutely. So. Cool. Yeah. All right. And we were looking at voice that are our college, too, and mm -hmm. we kind of been running it up against the cost because we're so right. small. It is. Yeah. So I think, I think we should. This is a good preliminary, but it does have some limitations that voice that it doesn't. I mean, you know, there's no perfection in life, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that's all I had to say. Um, it was great meeting all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe they will be eventually. Okay, okay. Yeah. great. Um, yeah, I definitely want to get, I'd love to get more information about this. Is there like an orientation video out there? To, are there videos? I think so. If you just go on like just okay. YouTube and search up Flipgrid yeah. or go to the website even. I'm teaching two online classes this quarter and mm -hmm. thinking that maybe it's like before the end, like try beta testing on it. Yeah, that's what I. That's actually what I did my first yeah. semester. I just added it at the end of the course. I had them like do a like yeah. reflection on the course, and I had them yeah. do this now instead. Yeah. But the only thing is like, uh, and I still have it like that in my course. I don't have it at the beginning. Yeah. I have it at the end. I'm just like, man, it would be nice to see their faces and know and hear their voices at the beginning. Yeah. Too. 
Well, it's a thing if it just depending on how it goes. I'm, I'm teaching the same course again in the winter, mm -hmm. so then I, I'm and um, luckily I have more time than usual to prep on Christmas. So oh, awesome! Really, just maybe redo some of those discussion forums. And I'm, I'm definitely like many people. I'm over discussion forums. Oh yeah, the relief is so nice. Yeah, That's yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is really exciting. It's like that one guy. Like he is like a formula. Like do this. Yeah, yeah. BS, yeah. BS, BS. I mean, BS. they're they're busy work for students and instructors. Like I don't even. Work. And there are times when I, I forget to participate, and I, then I feel bad that they, they, as mm -hmm. um, Flower said, she was talking about them. It's like you're, it's like you pose a question to your class and then you walk out of the room. You know. Don't, like, so the one thing, the one thing that law professor, um, the one, one thing she said she didn't like about it was that it made it harder for her to give students low grades because she felt more connected to them. <laughs> that's, a, that's a that's a good problem to have. Yeah, it's a good problem to have. Thank you very much. Was, yeah, it was um, great to really, meet you. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, uh, which, uh, um, Anthony. Anthony Richard. Richard, right? Yeah, thank you so much. We'll You're welcome. Back. Take care, yeah. Richard. Yeah. Distinction between it and flip and voice thread though. There's something different about it. Right? Yeah, so I mean voice thread lets you, you know, do just type responses or voice mm -hmm. responses or any of that stuff. You can use video. But um you have to pay for voice thread. So well, that's one qualitative difference yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, and qualitative. Um, it's not as intuitive. Like I've used some both for classes mm -hmm. and students don't like voice thread as much. A lot of times, like mobile didn't this work well. How does mobile work now? Um, it works okay, but students still get confused. Like after you create your post, you have to share it with everybody. Yeah. And right. so there's that extra step, and a lot of people like think they turned in their post mm -hmm. because they did it, but they didn't share it, so right. nobody can see it. Um, so that those kinds of things, like it, it's just not as intuitive. You could have just, I mean, yeah, you could have any kind like. Like make a YouTube video, share it with the class, right? Mm -hmm. like, so, you know, like, like it's the way it works. It's the way it's still uh, integrated and cross platform compatible. Mm -hmm. It's just so mm -hmm. easy to use. And so that's what, that's the game changer, though, right? Yeah. It's easy to use, but people want to use it in the like, experience. And with voice start too, like, um, we have it so you can build it with things that you learn. But the thing is, is that it's still not intuitive how to do it. I know, you yeah, have to yeah, create a link, right? yeah. here's the link to my grid, or here's the link to my voice thread, and then here's how you access the voice thread to go participate in the discussion after you've made your initial mm -hmm. post. So there's there's parts to it that don't make sense, and right. also... Because it wasn't really designed with that in mind. It, you know right, I mean? and, and when you grade it in um, a voice thread, it doesn't go over into... Does it? You know, into your black But it's account. designed you, isn't it? Yeah, and it doesn't work. So, so it, yeah, it's just, it's just not, yeah. I, I don't like well, it. I think that's why I'm excited. <laughs> like, the voice is like about like, this close to getting it, and then yeah. you're like, no, we're not going to get it. And then once it's like that, I'm like, well, I'm not going to get it. And as soon as I do the little personal part of the panel, we have like five max more right? Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, I, I um, think that we had purchased something else for Blackboard. And so it was kind of thrown into the package. How we ended up with it was more of a oh we'll give you this kind of thing. But um, I mean we do have a lot of people 